you might have heard about pre-rendering and static generation, but maybe you aren't quite sure if you fully understand it. In this video, I will do my best to explain to you what static generation is, uh, how to use it, when to use it and when not to use it. So after this video, you will be able to confidently use static generation in your own Next.js application and avoid the mistake of using it in a situations that it's not suitable for. So in Next.js, pages that don't need external data to be fetched are actually automatically statically generated when the app is built for production. So this means that Next.js will generate the HTML for the page in build time. So when you, for example, deploy your application to virtual or run the next build command uh, and then serve the generated HTML for the users. And the way this is different for other rendering methods is that the HTML is not generated when user makes the request for a page, but it is already generated ahead of time and then just served when the request comes in. If we then want to use uh, static generation in a page that uses external data, so for example, this kind of page where we display a list of posts and we get the posts pro as a prop for the component, we would actually need to fetch these posts somewhere before we can uh, pre-render this page with static generation. And the way to do this is actually define this get static props function. And this is a synchronous function and inside of this function we can call for example an API where we can fetch those posts and then if we return those posts from this function inside this props property they will be available in the block component so right here as a prop and we can fetch the data inside of the function from an API or for example from a database because uh, this getStaticProps function is run only on the server. So it's not included in the bundle for the browser. So this makes it that we can write code such as direct database queries or API requests with some secret API keys inside of this function uh, without them being sent to browser. And getStaticProps gets called in development mode on each request and in production it will be called on build time. So basically when you are deploying your application. So a couple of more things about get static props. So first of all, uh, get static props can only be exported from a page and we can't export it from a non page files. And second thing is that we can't use a request specific data such as HTTP headers inside get static props function. And this is because the function is meant to run in build time. So we can't use data that is only available during request time. Before we jump into when to use and when not to use static generation, I want to say thank you to Data CMS for sponsoring this week's video. So if you aren't familiar with the Data CMS, it's a headless CMS and it's actually the CMS I've been using on the blog application we have built in previous videos. And I think it's very easy to use and it also is very developer friendly, which is uh, of course something that I care a lot as a developer. A couple of the features that they have that I have been using a lot are first of all the GraphQL content API so you can query your content with GraphQL. Then the images API, which makes handling images super easy. And you should really check out one of the previous videos where we are, where we are building the blog application and where we implement the images API to handle our images in the blog. So you get understanding on what kind of things are possible with the images API. So if this piqued your interest, uh, go to datacms.com and check them out. And thank you again, DataCMS, for sponsoring this video. So when to use static generation? Well, simply put, whenever possible. Because by using static generation, you can have your page built once in uh, build time 
and then served by a CDN. And this makes the page to load much faster than having the server render the page on every request. And you should always ask yourself this question that can I pre-render this page ahead of user's request? And if the answer is yes, then you should use static generation. Okay, when not to use static generation then? Well, if you cannot pre-render the page ahead of user's request, and the page, for example, depends on the user's request and who is requesting the page, for example, a profile page, uh, then you should not use static generation. And this is because we don't have access to request related data inside that get static props function because it's run in build time. And you shouldn't use uh, static generation if the page shows frequently updated data and the page content changes on every request. And this kind of page would be, for example, a Twitter tweet feed or a dashboard of some kind. And in this kind of situations, you would be better off pre-rendering some part of the page and then fetching the dynamic part with client-side JavaScript, for example. So static generation is one of the ways to pre-render pages in Next.js and in order to achieve the best possible performance for your application, it's vital to understand Next.js pre-rendering. So watch this video over here next to learn all about pre-rendering in Next.js.